tell clients um, that, you know, when we first start wor working together, it's going to feel like a lot of me crawling around inside their brain because I'm trying to understand what they're thinking about, what what's what inside of them is compelling them to tell this particular story. How are we getting all of that on the page? Um, so how, uh, how, did, how, how did that process go? If you've just signed somebody and you're trying to crawl in their head, what kind of questions are you asking? What enables you to do that? It's different for every project. Unfortunately, again, there's not one easy answer, which is, you know, the sad anthem Come of our on, whole I want industry. easy answers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like this is, if it were widgets, man, um, it would all work <laughs> so much differently. <laughs> it would all get paid more. It would all be, it would all be totally different. Um, you know, sometimes people ask me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue for a second and come back to the question you're asking. Sometimes um, clients ask, and I think this is a common, um, thing that's talked about writers, writers talk together about this when they're looking for an agent, they say, are you an editorial agent? And I think um, for me, they sort of assume that I am because I have a whole background as an editor. But, and again, this is one of these things that I couldn't have told you three years ago when I started agenting, but I, I understand it about myself now is I'm never looking to do the editor's job. Uh, and in fact, I'm very aware from having been on the other side of the table, that I can't do all the fun parts and then try to sell a book. You know, I can't try to sell already chewed gum. Um, it's not to say that a perfect book wouldn't get acquired. Of course it would, you know, and, and um, you could get it onto a publishing schedule sooner. You could get it out faster if like a book came to an editor needing no work done. But at the same time, something would be lost in that process because part of what makes an editor say yes to something is they see the role that they can play in it. They see, I think I have exactly the right key to help the writer unlock the thing that's not working yet. You know, like I understand a lot about plot or I understand a lot about character. I realize that if you just took out this character that seems important but is actually distracting from the emotional growth, whatever it is, like they see the value that they can bring to it. That's what gets them excited because editors go into the job of editing, wanting to live inside stories all day. And instead they spend most of their day living inside conference rooms, having meetings and, and effectively being project managers inside a corporation. So when they get to really sit down and do the work of editing, that's the part they love best. That's the part that keeps them in the job. So my role isn't to steal that or um, or to do it for them because also, you know, most projects would be a different book. If you handed it to five different editors, you'd end up with five very different books because each of those editors would see the road a little differently. Um, so what I have realized for myself as an agent, my job, I, I describe myself as a developmental agent. Um, and by that, I mean that I can get involved at the early stage of a story. I'm never doing the line editing. I'm never tweaking word for word, sentence for sentence. What I'm looking at is the entire shape of the story and, and the movement of the story, the pacing, the, the emotional arc, the plot. And I'm thinking about um, how to get it to the point where the potential is strong enough to make an editor say yes to it, but all of the joy has not already happened, which is a very nebulous line and different for every project. Uh, <laughs> but it's, um, to me, it's it's the important creative part of the work, or one of, one of the important creative parts of the work I do is helping, I, and I tell my clients two things. I tell them, we're gonna edit this, we're going to work on it. We're going to develop it, you know, until I don't know what the rejection letters are going to say, which doesn't mean that we won't get them. <laughs> um, but if I can already anticipate that half the rejections we are going to get are going to say this character is underdeveloped emotionally or uh, the plot gets really dense and confusing in the middle or the ending didn't feel satisfying in terms of a trade-off for everything that it took us to get there. You know, if I already know what an editor is going to say no to, I'm going to work with the author to fix it because we only get to have so many um, 
chances to put it into the editor's hands and have it be the first time they read it and get excited about it and hopefully move it forward. So we work on it in that way, which is different than the way an editor works on it. They're, they're thinking about different questions, even though they're related. Um, they're thinking a little bit more about the end reader. I am as well, because naturally I'm thinking about that question of audience. But my first audience as an editor is how do we get, or as an agent, my first audience as an agent is the editor. How do we get the editor to say yes to it? Because if we don't, it doesn't matter if I can see what the librarians are gonna think and what the booksellers are gonna think. Well, the first person we have to literally sell it to is the editor in the publishing house. So that's are you my- Are you just the editor? Are you also thinking of the people that they've got to go then and take yeah. it to get approval to as yeah. well? And how do you separate the two in your mind? Um, well, I think the editors that I try to submit to are ones that I know are good at doing that part of their job, which is an entirely different skill set, but understanding how to maneuver the machine that is a publishing company, um, how to rally all of the folks behind it. I, I was just today um, with, with a client who uh, we, we had a meeting with the publishing house and it was the first time most of the publisher was was meeting this editor or i'm sorry was meeting this author um and it was the editor knowing that the sales people and the marketing people and the subsidiary rights people and the special sales people that hearing this author talk about some of their previous life experience was going to be valuable in helping um sell the book ultimately so she asked the author to come in and do a presentation, which would give each of these different um, professionals what they needed to do their job better. So this particular, I, I don't feel like it's my place to go into too much identifying information, which is why I'm being a little vague, but um, this particular author had a background um, working for some corporations that the special sales team who their job is to sell books into any place that's not a bookstore. So special sales sells books into places like anthropology or urban outfitters or crate and barrel or um, the, you know, national park gift shop, you know, all the places that like, Oh yeah, there's a couple books there, but there's not like endless books there. Um, so for them hearing that this, uh, author had had some experience working for some of those corporations gave them a certain uh, ammunition to go into their meetings with some of those buyers for. Um, similarly, hearing some of the things about creative process gave the sales reps um, a story to tell when they go to their buyers at the bookstores, they can talk about, you know, they they heard some things about how this author came to write their books in the first place and um, what what the personal part of the story was for the author. So everyone's sort of collecting the, the nugget they need to go do their job better. Makes sense. And then you can definitely hear how your time as an editor is very definitely informing um, your, your life <laughs> as a literary agent. Because one, I've, I've never heard the insight that make sure you save some of the fun for the editor. That's fantastic. Uh, but also it sounds like you're kind of helping to arm these editors with the ammunition they need ahead of time to make sure your, your deal gets done or am I, am I not hearing that correct? Yeah. Right, right? yeah. Um, when, when publishing works best, we are all on the same team, the author, the agent, the editor, their team, like we're all pulling together for the sake of the project. Sometimes things go off kilter and we're not able to be on the same team or, you know, I'm having to stand up for the author's needs and um, ahead of the publisher's needs, you know? So sometimes like there are situations that are not so perfect and beautiful, but when it's working at its best version, we're all together building this thing.